Good morning. So are calories just numbers and is quality of the nutrition more important? That was a question I got the other day. And how would you even know how many calories? I've heard that calories is quite inaccurate because um, manufacturers, they, food manufacturers, they can be out by sometimes 20% on the calories in food. So if you're counting them, is there error? Now, they're all good points. But the fact of the matter is calories in, calories out is key for weight loss, for fat loss. To lose body fat, there's 3,500 calories in one pound of body fat. And if you create a deficit of 3,500 calories, you will lose one pound of fat. Now, of course, there can be error in there in the calories, but as a general trend, that will dictate whether someone loses body fat. There's time and time again, there's evidence of this, no matter what diet you do, it does come back down to calories for weight loss fat loss. However, quality is really important. And the answer is always vanilla. Because let's face it, if you ate, and although that professor, can't think of his name now, he did an N equals one experiment, and he was doing his research, and he was like, I wish I was wrong here. He ate nothing but Twinkies, which is like a processed cake, um, Doritos, zebra cake, I think was in there. All junk, but he stayed within his calorie deficit. He took a multivitamin tablet and, and ate enough protein, free protein shakes alone. And he lost weight, his cholesterol improved, his blood pressure improved, all his biomarkers, metabolic health improved, yet he ate crap. But he was in a calorie deficit. Now, as he said, I wish this, I don't know what to say about this. Is, does this mean this is okay? Does this mean it's not? And of course, longer term, let's face it, you're going to have a hard time sticking to eating that kind of junk style food, you're probably gonna be hungry a lot because food volume is the biggest indicator of hunger. So if your food volume is very low, aka you could eat a chocolate brownie for 400 calories and it might be like that big and you might not be that full up after. You could eat a massive chicken, feta, salad, whatever. Lots of veggies, greens, fiber, protein in there, which is gonna keep you more full up for longer, which means you have an easier time sticking to the calories, okay? Now, there are two things to consider. We could go in all day with that, but to say that just because there's some inaccuracy in calories that we shouldn't do it is kind of missing. There's a bit of inaccuracies in everything. And if we talk about like blood sugar levels, people tracking their blood sugar, that in itself is very inaccurate for people without type 1 diabetes. And it's not a very good indicator of our response to food because it can be impacted by whether I'm stood up or sat down, whether I'm active or not, whether I exercised yesterday, whether I ate carbs yesterday or protein yesterday whether I had eight hours sleep or four hours sleep, as I'm soon to have with baby on the way. And that's, that's all key things to consider, whether I had a meal or one single food. For example, some people might go, oh yeah, I don't want to have carrots because they'll spike your blood sugar levels. But, but what if you had carrots in a roast dinner with chicken? The protein will help your uh, glucose response, not, not spike. So is it actually irrelevant? And this is where glycemic load rather than just individual foods having spikes. We eat meals, not foods, right? And this is the key thing to remember. And now does that now become irrelevant? Because I eat meals, not foods. All these things are really important to think about. But ultimately, let's go on to the second question because by now I hope you understand that calories are king, but quality is well very important. In fact, if you chase quality, quite often, I always say chase quality first. Get your main meals, get protein at every meal, get as many veggies as you can at every meal for your gut health, the fiber, get some carbs in, fish sides carb, all good if you want to. If you don't want to have that, fine. Overload with the carbs a bit more, there's gonna be like a veg a bit more, there's gonna be some carbs in there anyway. And then allow yourself like 300 odd calories as a snacks, whatever you want throughout the day. Give yourself permission to have the chocolate brownie, have more fruit, chocolate, whatever it is. Don't hold back, just plan that into your day. And actually you're gonna get a nice 80-20 rule there of majority is quality, but I'm sticking within my portion size and I'm allowing myself a little bit of a, a higher caloric snack or if I want something that I have a craving for. Because guess what, when you cut out that food group, what do you do? You crave it more. And it happens time and time again. So, in terms of that, that that's it. How many, how many calories do you need? How do you know how many calories you need? Well. We do have a calculator, which I'll put a link to at the bottom. It's uh, fruityfit.com forward slash how many calories do I need? 
That's fruityfit.com forward slash how many calories do I need? I think that's quite easy to remember ish. Uh, no da- no hyphens, like just fruityfit.com forward slash how many calories do I need? Now, there's a rough calculator, but there's loads of calculators out there. They all give you a ballpark figure. They're like this. Just thinner. Now, they give you that ballpark thing, and it's good to play with. You might start there and go, I'll start there. It might be too high, it might be too low. However, good thing to do, you're only going to know that by aiming to hit that for, say, two to four weeks or around that. Be consistent, have a range. So say it says 1,500 calories for, for, for fat loss, say. Um, you might go, well, 1,500, I'll allow myself fourteen to 1,600. And I'm going to be consistent with that for two to four weeks. I'm gonna look what my weight does on average. Maybe you weigh daily, add them all up, divide by seven over the week. What happens then is you get an average weight. When you've got an average weight, you can then see how you're responding to those calories. Did you even hit them? Were you in your range? 14 to 1600, okay? And then we can see how your body responds over time, collecting data to 14 to 1600. We're not jumping one thing to another. Your weight will fluctuate up and down at times. And you might say that that's too much. You might say that's too little, but everything's individual to you. Morning, Heather. But if it's individual, if you say that's, that's too much, consider that this also counts for weekends. So then you might go a bit like, well, I can eat a bit less during the week and allow myself a bit more at the weekend. That's something that we can discuss. But the, this is a strategy to then see, okay, how do I respond on this over two to four weeks? Because you might not lose anything in week one. You might not lose anything in week two, but then you might be in a deficit to lose enough pound, two pounds, whatever, in week three. And actually, if you're if it's sustainable, you quite enjoy doing it. It gives you the flexibility to have what you want, but with the, most of it's coming from good quality. So you're feeling good, your energy's good. Why would you stop? You know, if it's longer term and it allows you to keep it off. Because let's face it, one of the key things is the sustainability. Anyone can do a new year, new me for, for a few weeks but how many of us are keeping it going. And it's about one habit at that time, because as cliche as that is, that is how you develop the mindset, the rituals, the habits to be able to keep going with it. So if you start going, you know, I now try and get protein in every meal. You start there and all of a sudden, even when you have the blood, even if you lose a bit of motivation, you know, right, I need to get back to that again. That worked and it was, quite simple to bring in. As hard as it is, you know what, it's easier than being hungry, tired, thinking about food all the time. And then we can start bringing it in all the Then you're like, you know, getting used to planning that snack in, giving yourself permission to have a bit of junk from time to time, if you want it. If you want it, you got permission. We're adults, right? And we can have it as part of our plan. And research shows that providing we're within our calories, you'll be fine. And guess what? Even if you're like, oh, no, I, I as soon as I touch that stuff, it'll put on weight. Well, it's probably because we have that mindset and therefore when we touch that stuff, we don't just touch it, we have times 10 of that stuff. Whereas this is about an approach where we're like, you know, I'll have a bit and I'll be okay with that. It's not the end of the world. Body fat isn't just gonna go, it's not how calories work. Your body sees, your body sees numbers, unfortunately, no matter what anyone says. (laughs) But the nutrition is key, that's why 80-20. That's why one of our main principles at Fruity Fit is making sure the majority is quality foods. That's what we want. So, and then after two to four weeks, you've got data. Then we tweak. So I hope that helps. Morning, Debbie. I hope that helps. Any questions, as always, let me know. And remember, if you want a little calorie calculator, although there's loads out there, but fruityfit.com forward slash how many calories do I need? Hope that helps. If you are coming in for our 100 day kickstart, I will see you soon. Or comment below for more info, just with January or 100 day, and I'll get you the details on that. Take care, have an awesome Monday.